am still so shaken with everything, so sorry for my rambling. My husband Jake and I have been married for three years, and from the beginning, he was very close with his best friend's sister, Cindy, 18-year-old female. Well, my husband would often talk about her and tell me how he had seen her grow up throughout the years. Cindy is always very bubbly and seems very fond of Jake as well. I remember when we were dating, she would ask to come along on our dates a lot. I never really said anything because I liked spending time with her as well. She was like a little sister to me. When we announced our engagement, she asked my husband to better not forget her after becoming a married man and to still hang out with her. Well, we got married and I even made her my bridesmaid. Soon we moved to a different state and we kind of lost contact. Now Jake's best friend came to stay with us for some time and Cindy came along as well. When she saw us, the first thing she said was how hot my husband had gotten and she was glad he didn't look like those boring married men. Then throughout their stay, Cindy would ignore my presence and be way too close with Jake. I told Jake that it was looking a bit inappropriate and asked him to ask Cindy to tone it down, but he said that Cindy is just a bit childish and acts that way with everybody. Well, on their last day, we decided to host a dinner party for everybody. During the party, I was with Jake when Cindy came and told me, oh, I need to steal your husband for a while. And before I could say something, she grabbed Jake's hand and took him to play games. I ignored it since it was their last day. But then throughout the dinner, she was getting way too close to Jake and would just drag him away whenever I was around, giggling at me. When everybody sat for dinner, I sat beside Jake and Cindy came last. She then said, oh, there is no seat and went and sat on my husband's lap. Everybody was surprised and Jake said laughing, Cindy, stop acting like a kid. You are not a kid anymore. Cindy started laughing, saying it was a joke, got up, and sat in another seat while giggling at me. Yeah, I was so angry with the disrespect and with the fact that Jake was so cool with it, but I didn't want to say anything bad. So I excused myself, took my car, and went out. About one hour later, Jake called me, asking where I was. I told him I am going to my friend's house and I will come after Cindy has left. I know what I did was terrible, but I was so angry at that time that if I had stayed there any longer, I would have probably started fighting or crying. I came the next day, and Cindy and her family had left. Jake was very pissed and said I took things too far. I started crying and told him how everything made me feel. He said I was horrible to think such things about Cindy, and that she was like his sister. I told him that I was not doubting his intentions, but I was hurt by how disrespectful Cindy's behavior was, and he was enabling her by not saying anything. He started saying that I sound ridiculous and couldn't even take a joke, referring to the sitting on lap incident I said regardless, I don't want her in my house again. To top it off, Cindy sent a message saying that she was sorry about making me so insecure in myself and that she would make sure to make me feel better, but I should not have left as it was pretty childish and kind of spoiled the mood. It felt so backhanded I didn't reply anything to her. I just told my husband he needs to maintain a distance from Cindy. He asked if I was giving him an ultimatum. I said, if he will go as far as disregard and disrespect my feelings for Cindy, then yes, it is an ultimatum. This really rubbed my husband the wrong way. And he said, since I have such disgusting thoughts in my mind and am giving him an ultimatum anyways, then he might as well leave because he cannot live with such an insecure person who has such disgusting thoughts about him. He packed a bag and left for his mother's place. I have tried apologizing numerous times, telling him how sorry I am for everything, but he is ignoring my texts and calls. Later, Cindy's brother texted me and called me a bunch of names for thinking like that about his sister, saying Jake should just leave me and a disgusting person like me deserves to be alone. I could not stop crying after that. I don't know how to fix this. Is there a way to even come back? Was I so wrong to deserve this? I don't know anymore. Edit. People who are asking for our ages. We are both 25 years old, just months apart. Update. Thank you all for responding. And to those who gave me good advice in personal messages. I couldn't read all the comments, but now I know my feelings are valid and boundaries were crossed by Cindy. During the dinner, there was Cindy, her brother Sean, his girlfriend, and their cousin Derek, also a good friend of my husband, with his boyfriend. So I called Derek and asked about the situation and what happened after I left. He was sympathetic and said that after I left, 
At first, they thought I would come back after some time. However, things were really awkward. But when I didn't come, Sean's girlfriend told Cindy that she was disrespectful for doing that. Derek and his boyfriend also said the same thing. Cindy started crying and said they didn't have to corner her and attack her over a silly joke, and that she didn't know it would get so out of hand. She then left the room while crying. Jake didn't know what to say, and everybody left early the next day. Derek also told me that Cindy has always had issues with boundaries, and when he introduced his boyfriend to everybody, Cindy would get too close and joke that she was just checking if he was really gay. They were really uncomfortable with it as well, so Derek confronted her. Cindy rolled her eyes and said they can't take a joke and eventually stopped. This all sounds so bizarre. I don't know what's going on with Cindy. Sean's girlfriend also texted me saying she was sorry for what happened. I told her how Sean's message was inappropriate, but she had no idea about the text. So I sent her a screenshot and asked her to tell Sean to not harass me again. She was very apologetic and said she would talk to him. Now my mother-in-law called and asked what was going on as Jake didn't tell her and only said we had an argument. I was a bit hesitant to tell her, but eventually told her everything. She was furious at my husband. She said they will be coming to have a talk. So yeah, I am just waiting for them to arrive and really nervous. I don't know if what I did was right or wrong, but we will see. As for people saying my husband is some child toucher or they are having an affair, I know this is the furthest from the truth. I never questioned his intentions, but what hurt me was the lack of respect from Cindy towards me. Update 2 So my mother-in-law came with my husband, and well, the talk happened. There were a lot of things, but I will try to summarize. Basically, Jake apologized to me first and tried to explain his point of view. He said that he was angry because A, I left without saying anything for the whole night when he was literally trying to defuse the situation and tried to laugh it off because it was so awkward he didn't know what else to do. He was meeting his friends after such a long time and just wanted the dinner to be peaceful. And Cindy was going back anyways, and we would most likely never see her again. B, he acknowledged Cindy was indeed overstepping boundaries but he didn't know how to bring it up since he has literally seen her growing up and she is like a little sister to him. Also, she acts like that with everyone. He thought that it was just for a few days and he wanted no drama during their stay, so he would just brush it off. He did acknowledge he was wrong about not saying anything. C, he was already really worried and sad because of how I just left with no explanations. Even after I came, not once did I ask how he felt. He was also very overwhelmed with everything and felt I was accusing him for not doing anything when he literally pushed her off as politely as possible when she tried to sit. He felt I was attacking his character and even gave the ultimatum, which made him so sad as he felt I thought less of him. It wasn't about Cindy, but about how easy it was for me to question his sincerity. He said after that dinner he was going to go extremely low contact with her anyways. D. He apologized for not speaking up about the disrespect Cindy was showing towards me and for leaving like that. Then, after Jake said everything, my mother-in-law explained the situation from her perspective. She scolded him a lot as well. In short, she told him that as a husband, it was his responsibility to make me feel like I am his priority and that he disappointed me the moment I had to come to him to ask for establishing boundaries. As a husband, it was his duty that I never would have to come to him about this in the first place. She also asked him how he would have felt had it been a guy on my lap, and he had no answer. She told him how what I did was an eruption of suppressed feelings, and as a husband, it was his duty to go after me and never let me leave in the first place. There were a lot of things said by her, and Jake seemed to realize and sincerely apologized for his actions. She told him if he ever pulled such a stunt ever again, then not to expect her to take him in. Later, she took me for a walk. It was just the two of us. And there, she explained some things to me as well. She said that she is sorry for everything, but told me that even at her house, Jake was distraught. He didn't tell her because he most likely knew he was wrong too, but was overwhelmed with everything as well. She said she was in no way excusing her son's behavior, but hoped that I would forgive him. She also said that in no circumstance do I need to leave my house, as it is my house and my family. She said I shouldn't be afraid to speak my mind if anything makes me uncomfortable and to talk to her if Jake does something stupid again and she will set him straight. 
She hoped we work it out since she has seen our love for each other, and it would be sad to see us split up due to some disrespectful brat, her words. She said she cannot have a say in our issues, but suggested that we should get counseling to understand each other better. She even bought ice cream for me. I know it's a bit childish, but she said sweet things work as a charm when people are upset. And well, she was right. Well, it was awkward at night. Jake came to our room and we didn't know what to say. After a while, we talked and both apologized to each other. However, I did tell him that I was angry at him for telling everything to Sean and that I was deeply hurt by the text he sent me. He said he didn't know what I was talking about, so I showed him the texts. He said he didn't tell Sean about our fight and only told him that he was at his mom's place. He called Sean and it turns out Sean told Cindy and told her how she went too far at the party. Then Cindy made a huge sob story about how I was passive aggressive with her the whole time, how I would always try to question her character and act insecure and jealous. She even went on to say that I was always like that with her even when she was a kid and that I never liked her and always tried to manipulate people into thinking I was an angel while she was a SLT. Well, that made him angry to think how I have been treating Cindy and he sent those texts. Jake and I were baffled by such accusations and he tried to explain to Sean how it wasn't true. But then Jake just let it be and decided to go no contact with Cindy and extremely low contact with Sean. Jake apologized again and we just cuddled and slept. Well, Cindy is out of our lives for good now and we have decided to go to counseling for better communication in the future. Let's see how everything goes in the future. But yeah, we are not getting divorced. I know a lot of you want me to show Jake this post, but he was so sad and got scolded a lot already. So I decided not to show him for now. Maybe in the future. Sorry for all this rambling. Have a good day, people. Edit. I read people saying we should be no contact with Sean too, and I felt that it would be best to let that friendship go as well. So I talked to my husband about it, and he agreed. He sent a text to Sean stating we could not be friends with him, and then blocked him as well. To clarify, I have somewhat forgiven Jake for his actions, but I told him he needs to rebuild the trust I had so I know I can rely on him in situations like that. He agreed, and we will get couples counseling as well. Thank you all for your advice. You all made me feel less lonely in all of this. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Her behavior is inappropriate. She is not just a little girl with a crush anymore, so she needs to be treated accordingly. He is a married man, and he needs to be shutting down that type of behavior because she is not going to stop until he does. I understand that he probably still views her as a harmless kid, but your husband should be considering your feelings and boundaries. Comment 2. Not the idiot. Your husband, and everyone else for that matter, is gaslighting you. You have every right to feel the way you do. She is 18 years old, she is not a kid anymore, she knows fully well what she is doing. Maybe your husband doesn't feel any attraction towards her, but he shouldn't dismiss your feelings like that. Him, his friend, and his friend's sister are the AH here. Now for the update, thank you for your comments and advice from my last post. I'm still reeling from everything, so bear with me as I try to get this all out. After the whole ordeal with Cindy and the dinner party, things just spiraled. I thought it couldn't get worse, but it did. Jake's mom came over and we had that big talk. It seemed like we were on the path to fixing things, but then Cindy's brother, Sean, decided to stir the pot again. He sent me another message, this time accusing me of being a control freak and trying to isolate Jake from his friends and family. He said I was tearing their family apart. It was like a slap in the face. I showed Jake the message and he was furious. He couldn't believe Sean would say such things, especially after everything that had happened. Jake confronted Sean about the message, and things got heated. Sean admitted that Cindy had been feeding him lies about me, saying I was always mean to her and that I was trying to turn Jake against his own friends. It was all nonsense, but Sean had bought into it. Jake tried to set the record straight, but Sean wouldn't listen. He was too far gone, blinded by his loyalty to his sister. The next day, I found out that Cindy had been spreading rumors about me to our mutual friends. She was painting herself as the victim, saying I was jealous and had always been out to get her. It was like she was trying to destroy my reputation. I felt so betrayed. I couldn't believe she would go to such lengths just to hurt me. It was like she enjoyed watching my world crumble. Jake was beside himself with guilt. 
He realized that by not setting boundaries with Cindy, he had allowed her to think she could get away with anything. He apologized to me over and over, saying he should have listened to me from the start. He promised to cut Cindy out of his life for good, and he did. He blocked her on all social media and told her not to contact us again, but the damage was done. The rumors had spread and people were looking at me differently. I felt so alone, like I was fighting a battle I couldn't win. Jake tried to be there for me, but I could see the strain it was putting on him. He was caught between his family and his wife and it was tearing him apart. In the midst of all this, Jake's mom reached out to me. She was the only one who seemed to understand what I was going through. She told me that she had seen Cindy's true colors a long time ago, but she had hoped for her son's sake that Cindy would change. She was disappointed in her son for not standing up for me sooner, but she also knew that Jake was a good man who had made a mistake. She encouraged us to seek counseling and we agreed. The counseling sessions were tough. We had to confront a lot of issues that we had been avoiding. It was painful, but it was also necessary. We learned to communicate better and to trust each other again. It wasn't easy, but we were determined to make it work. As for Cindy, she eventually moved on to a new target. I heard through the grapevine that she had caused drama in another friend's relationship. It was like a pattern with her, and I felt sorry for anyone who got caught in her web. But I was also relieved that she was no longer our problem. Jake and I are still working on our marriage. It's not perfect, but we're in a much better place than we were before. We've learned that we need to stand together, no matter what comes our way. And we've learned that sometimes you have to cut toxic people out of your life for the sake of your own sanity. Thank you for reading my update. It's been a tough journey, but I'm grateful for the support I've received from all of you. My boyfriend called me gross for using disposable underwear during my period. So I filed a restraining order and made sure he regretted ever shaming me. Throw away because this is embarrassing enough already. I, 23-year-old female, and my boyfriend, 30-year-old male, have been dating for two years. We don't live together because I don't want to live with his roommates, and I won't let him move in with me because I live in a small studio behind my landlord's house. The space just isn't large enough. I was the only girl in my house growing up with five brothers. I know men don't like to know about this stuff. My dad and brothers always made me throw my slastosh women things in the outside trash, and I was never allowed to talk about it. When I know I'm going to be with my boyfriend, or if I'm at work in public, I will use a disc. They work okay for short periods of time for me. But at night, when I know I'm going to be alone, I will use those disposable underwear. I don't worry about tossing around at night and leaking. I don't have to think about getting TSS, and honestly, I cramp less. But they look like a diaper, and I know that's not sexy. My boyfriend had a weekend trip to Vegas, planned leave Friday, and come back Monday. I was on my period, knew he would be out of town, so I decided to sleep comfortably. Something happened on the trip, and they ended up coming back late Sunday instead of Monday. He decided not to tell me because he wanted to surprise me. So I went to bed Sunday night around 9, like always. At some point in the middle of the night, he slipped into bed with me. When he got into bed, he felt the period underwear and freaked out. He said I was gross for just laying there in the blood. I got up, took a shower, and changed into a disc. When I laid back down, he just ignored me and went to sleep. I went to work and didn't hear from him on Monday. Tuesday afternoon, he came over to talk and said when he thinks about me, all he can see is a child wearing a diaper. He asked if I slash used them, and I said of course not, but he says he doesn't believe me, that I'm a horrible girlfriend for hiding this fetish from him that he's wasted all of this time and energy on our relationship. I tried to explain why I use them when he's not around, and that I know they aren't attractive, that I'll stop using them altogether because I love him and I don't want to ruin our relationship. He said he'll think about it, but he wants me to talk to my doctor about getting on a different birth control, so I don't have my period at all, because now the thought of me having one grosses him out. I told him I don't want to change birth controls. So now he says I'm in jerk for not being willing to do something so simple to make him feel better. I told him I needed a few days to get a hold of my doctor. I have an appointment on Friday. Am I the jerk if I decide not to change birth controls? Update. I canceled the doctor's appointment. I'm reading through everyone's comments. There's so many I can't respond. I want to clear a few things up though. Him coming in while I was sleeping. He had permission to do that for most of our relationship because he works very early in the morning 
and would wake me up so we can spend time together on days we wouldn't see each other later. So, no, that was not attempted rap or a concern at all. As a teen, my best friend's mom is who bought me pads. My mom passed when I was nine. Some people messaged me, and during those conversations, a few more things have connected, and yeah, I'm gonna break up with him. There are other things he's done that I didn't think were problems, and they are. Thank you for helping me. Last update. I took the little bit of stuff he had here to his apartment while he was at work. I met with him after he got off and told him I wasn't going to change birth control. And after thinking about his reaction and a few other conversations we've had, I had no interest in being with him anymore. He threw a tantrum, saying, I'm never going to find someone who loves me like him and a lot of other gross things I don't want to repeat. When I got home, I thanked my landlord for telling me to post here and told her what the outcome was. Just so everyone isn't worried, you have to go through a gate with a code to get to where my studio is. I've changed my access code so he can't get in, and I gave the night security his car information and a photo just to be safe. There are so many comments I can't respond to all of them. Thank you for all of the advice, not only about this situation, but many of you commented about my upbringing and that there are some things I need to work through. I'm going to do that. Thanks for everything. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot, oh my God, he's a 30 year old man, not a child. At 30, he should be old enough to handle the fact that his girlfriend has periods and that she wears different things because of that. Dump him and get with someone who is more mature. This won't be the last time that he acts like a child and tries to be manipulative about something. And I'm sure it's not his first either. Comment two, run. Real men aren't phased by periods. It's life. This is such a huge red flag. I'm insulted for you. Not the idiot, but the man-child you are dating certainly is. Edit. Guys, it was one word mistyped. He's still the jerk. Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around. So after I broke up with him, things got even messier. My ex, let's call him Mr. Tantrum, didn't take the split well. He started showing up at my work, trying to talk some sense into me, as he put it. It was embarrassing. My boss had to step in and tell him to leave or she'd call the cops. That should have been the end of it, right? Wrong. A week later, my landlord, the sweet lady who lives in the main house, told me she saw Mr. Tantrum lurking around the gate. He was trying to guess the new access code. She confronted him and he spun some story about needing to get his stuff back, stuff he never had at my place. She didn't buy it and threatened to call the police. He left, but not before kicking the gate and shouting some choice words. Then my brother, the one I'm closest to, got involved. He's always been the protective type, but this time, he went too far. He found Mr. Tantrum at a bar and, well, let's just say they had a conversation that ended with Mr. Tantrum sporting a black eye and my brother getting arrested for attack. My family was furious saying I'd brought this trouble on us all. I felt guilty, like it was my fault for dating Mr. Tantrum in the first place. But the real kicker came when I found out Mr. Tantrum had been spreading rumors about me. He told anyone who would listen that I was the crazy one, that I had these wild mood swings and he was just trying to help me. It was like he was trying to rewrite our entire relationship. Some people actually believed him and I started getting these pitying looks at the grocery store. I was at my breaking point. I couldn't go to work without looking over my shoulder. I couldn't go home without wondering if he was waiting for me. I was losing sleep, my work was suffering, and my family was caught in the middle of this mess. So, I did the only thing I felt I could do. I filed for a restraining order. It was a long and draining process, full of paperwork and court dates, but it was worth it. The judge granted the restraining order, and suddenly, I could breathe again. Mr. Tantrum had to stay away from me, my work, and my home. If he came near me, he'd be arrested on the spot. The aftermath was a mix of relief and sadness. My relationship with my brother was strained because of his arrest, and my family was divided on whether I'd done the right thing. But I knew I had to protect myself. I couldn't live in fear of Mr. Tantrum's next move. And then, just when I thought things were settling down, my landlord told me she was selling the property. She was getting older and wanted to move closer to her family. I was happy for her, but it meant I had to find a new place to live. It felt like the universe was kicking me while I was down. 
I managed to find a new apartment, a little one-bedroom place that was all mine. No roommates, no landlords, just me. It was a fresh start, a chance to rebuild my life without Mr. Tantrum's shadow looming over me. I'm still working through everything that happened. I'm seeing a therapist, trying to make sense of it all. But I'm getting stronger every day. I've learned that I can stand up for myself, that I don't have to accept being treated poorly by anyone, boyfriend or not. Thanks for reading. My husband planted a camera to prove I'm lazy. So I kicked him out, filed for divorce, and took him for all he's worth when he tried to take my kids. It's been about a month since I, 46-year-old female, found out my husband, 47-year-old male, had put a hidden camera in our living room to prove that I'm lazy and worthless. It was a small disguised camera hidden inside what looked like a charging block. He stuck one in a living room outlet. We have three kids, 16-year-old female, 14-year-old male, 12-year-old female, who all have a bunch of chargers and such, so I did not suspect. The point my husband was trying to prove was that my administrative skills are not up to the super stay-at-home mom standards he as a high earner deserves. This all started after a situation where my 12-year-old needed a permission slip signed and forms filled out in order to go on a class trip. I admit that things happened, and we missed the submission deadline. I had made a note to fill out the forms on another day since it was a task I needed to be 100% focused on, but it became the start of a new month, and that's when I do most of the shopping and tracking of household bills subscriptions. I do daily cleaning, but we use a service for deep cleaning landscaping that I had to supervise. Long story short, my 16-year-old calls my husband after picking up her sister, saying she was crying because she can't go on her trip. My husband drives to the school to beg them to let him fill the forms out in the office. Thankfully, they let him since it was the same day. I apologized profusely. My husband, who is self-employed as an HVAC technician, laid into me about how he has so many calls a day but still handles the administrative aspect of his job, communications, and bookkeeping. I yelled back because his work is concentrated, while my work at home has a bunch of moving parts and emotional labor as well, and I do it all behind the scenes. He digs his heels in about how I wasn't as busy and needed to do easy things better. A week later, he picks a fight about me not going that day to mail checks out to his employees when I could have done it the next day. He admits to the camera and starts citing proof of times I was on my phone, and that automatically equals goofing off. I was on my phone researching meals to fit my daughter's dietary restrictions while keeping her healthy as a ballet dancer. I was looking into subscriptions for frozen but healthy meals she and the rest of us could have on the go or at home. The fact he took offense to me occasionally lying down when I was researching or that I had taken a TV break before preparing dinner did it for me. He knew that my days are crazy during the first days of the month, which was when the permission slip debacle happened. I kicked him out of the house. It's been a month and friends have been saying that I'm missing the fact there are others out there who would not disregard the things I do to make being a high earner possible. I ended up seeing an attorney and just filed for divorce because I feel violated and devalued. Am I the idiot? Now, for a few comments before the update, comment one. I admit that things happened and we missed the submission deadline. Uh, this part really needs to be elaborated on. As far as I can tell, this is either you're the idiot or everyone sucks here, but I'm leaning towards you're the idiot because it sounds like his suspicions were absolutely confirmed. Hidden cameras do sound like a good reason for trust being lost and justification for ending the relationship, but holy moly, you are not taking any responsibility for his lack of trust in you. Edit, reread the line. A week later, he picks a fight about me not going that day to mail checks out to his employees when I could have done it the next day. You're the idiot. Don't mess with people's money. Comment two, you're the idiot. I really wanna be on your side because I would also file for divorce if I found a hidden camera, but you supervise the house cleaner and the landscapers, and this is a full-time job? You need to research pre-cooked meals, but you don't do the deep cleaning, you have to schedule time to fill out a form? What kind of questions are the teachers asking here? What exactly do you do all day? Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. So the divorce papers were filed, but that's when things got really twisted. My husband, he didn't take it lying down. He started spreading rumors around town about me saying I was the one who had been unfaithful. Can you believe that? 
He even convinced my best friend Sarah to side with him. She's been my rock since college, and out of nowhere she's testifying that she's seen me with other men while my husband was working hard. It was a complete lie, but people started looking at me funny, whispering when I walked by. It was like living in a bad dream. And then the kids. They were confused, torn between us. My oldest, she's smart, started asking questions, doubting everything. My son, he's a mama's boy, but even he started to act out, getting into fights at school. The youngest, she just cried, asking why daddy couldn't come home. It was breaking my heart seeing them like this, all because of his lies. But it didn't stop there. He took a bold move, one that changed everything. He filed for full custody, claiming I was an unfit mother, said I was neglectful, too caught up in my own world to care for our kids. He used that one mistake with the permission slip as his so-called evidence. It was a low blow, and it hit hard. The thought of losing my kids, it was like a punch to the gut. The custody battle, it was ugly. We were in and out of court, lawyers throwing accusations like it was nothing. It was during one of those hearings that the real betrayal came out. Turns out, Sarah wasn't just siding with my husband out of loyalty. No, she had been seeing him behind my back for months. That's why she lied, to cover up their affair. I couldn't believe it. My best friend and my husband, together. It was a soap opera, all right, but one I never wanted to be a part of. The aftermath was messy. Friends took sides, most of them believing his lies over my truth. I was isolated, the talk of the town, and not in a good way. But I had to keep fighting, for my kids, for myself. I couldn't let him win, not after everything he'd done. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, they did. My husband, he had a heart attack. Stress, they said. The town, they rallied around him, the poor man fighting for his life and his kids. And there I was, the villain in their eyes, the wife who drove her husband to the brink. But I had to stay strong. I visited him in the hospital for the kids' sake. They needed to see that we could still be civil, that we were still a family, even if it was broken. He survived, thank God. But things were different. He was softer, more reflective. He dropped the custody case, said he just wanted to focus on getting better. I didn't trust it, not one bit, but I played along. In the end, we settled. Joint custody, a fair division of assets. It wasn't what I wanted, but it was something. I had to accept it this terrible situation for the sake of peace for the kids. I didn't realize it then, but I was giving up more than I should have. I was so tired, so worn down by it all, that I just wanted it to be over. Thanks for hearing me out. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.